Shalom, and welcome to uh, another edition of Great Millstone Smartphone Conversation. And today's date is Saturday, April 28th, 7.48 a.m. in the morning. And um, I'm going to call this video Spies and False Brethren. And it's based upon the fact that among the different groups, especially Great Millstone, um, you're going to have spies and you're going to have false brethren. And this is based upon Bible scripture. Now, I remember years ago, uh, we had this character at the school in Bridgeport who went by the name Mike. <laughs> That's his name his Hebrew name was Micah Allah, but we called him Mike. And um you might have heard us talk about him. He's the same guy that made the statement, Oh, you mean to tell me America ain't gonna go down before the year two thousand? Oh man. And that was the excuse that he used to fall right out the faith. Because what happened was, a week before the year 2000, uh, Apostle Elder Tar called the school and said, you know, Esau ain't going to go down before the year 2000. I mean, it was so obvious. And we were like, oh, yeah, we know that. You know, it was so obvious that we had to accept it. But, you know, Mr. Dramatics himself, Mike, <laughs> make that statement you know uh, you mean to tell me America ain't gonna go down before the year 2000 and right after that he fell out the faith and truth be told a lot of guys fell out the faith after the year 2000 a lot of dudes man even Gehenna that claimed <laughs> that his men claimed that he'd been in the truth since 1969 which is a bull a bull faced lie. Even after the year two thousand, he went back into the world, man. You know. <laughs> so the point I'm making with Mike is, I'll never forget this. We were outside the school. We were congregating by the door. The apostle Tar was there. I myself was there. I believe Apostle Ramlam was there. And Apostle Tar made a statement. He said, look, we got spies in here. <laughs> and everybody kept their mouth shut except Mike, of course. And Mike was always known to put his foot in his mouth. And uh, Mike made the statement. Mike said, ah, uh, oh, come on, Taha. I checked out all the, you know, he, he curled up his index finger. Like I said, I, I forget. I, I I never forgot this. It's um, it's like it's like yesterday to me. And he curled up his index finger and he said, "Oh man, to how I checked all these brothers in here. There's no spies in here." <laughs> now I'm not <laughs> saying that Mike was a spy. Maybe he was. I don't know. <laughs> But, you know, I don't think he was bright enough to be a spy. A spy got to be, got to have some kind of sense. And Mike just, Mike was just, you know, he was just a, a, a simpleton. <clears throat> but he did fall out the faith, that's for sure. And you got a lot of guys out there, fast forward to today, you got a lot of guys out there that have that Mike's mentality. They actually believe there's no spies among them. And, uh... I'm here to tell you, you're not dealing with reality, okay? <laughs> you got spies and you got, well, it's evident we have false brethren among us. It's only a matter of time till they reveal themselves, but you definitely have spies. And now that you have this Southern Poverty Law Center nonsense, you got individuals that ESO have set up to give them intel. Different in individuals among the different groups, even here at Great Millstone, who report back to Esau and give and give Esau intel? You know, give them uh, intelligence on what's going on. 
the inner workings and whatnot. And um, this is quite biblical, okay? Quite biblical. Matter of fact, speaking of biblical, let's go to the scriptures. The first scripture that I'm going to go to is Galatians, of course. You know I got to start with that. Another example I got for you, brothers, is years ago we were at the school, uh, 126th Street. This is this is after we left 125th Street because we left with the king, King Marshaw, and King Marshaw went to 126th Street. There was a little little school there, and we were eventually, you know, Apostle Apostle Elator on down, eventually we were kicked out of 126th Street. We left 125th Street, but we were kicked out of 126th Street. That was the house of David. And the leaders of that school at that time was, you know, the guy we always talk about, Ben. You know, the guy that was in the video with, uh, with um, Nate, you know, and they're going into the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, that guy. Yeah, Ben, he was there. He had uh, um, Yasha, okay, which you 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 brothers don't know too much about Yasha, which you which recently Apostle Elatar ran into him, and he was acting all nervous, and he has good right to act nervous because he was one of the guys that kicked us out, kicked us out of the house of David over the Cornelius issue. <sighs> Well, anyway, um, we had our class uh, Monday night because at that time I was working with uh, Apostle Elder Tar. We were doing a messenger work, working for a messenger company in uh, New York. And uh, after work, we would go to the school and uh, teach class. That, the, the truth be told, that was the high point of our day. Man, we couldn't wait to get to the school to teach the class. Anyway, um, when we first started the class, our first student was uh, uh, um, that guy that uh, the brothers in uh, London called Danger Mouse. Now, you don't even see him anymore. At uh, one time, he used to go out on the street and teach. You don't even see him now, okay? Uh, uh, brothers call him Danger Mouse. You know, I forgot his Hebrew name. It was so long ago. Um, he was our first student. And then the word got around, and that became the most popular class, the Monday class. Because we, we, not only were we going into the scriptures, we were going into, uh, you know, to, uh, we were going into, um, uh, you know, the Illuminati and, and, uh, and uh, different topics you know, of global, what's the word for it? Geopolitics, geopolitics and marrying it with the scriptures. So you can only imagine the class got really popular and damn, damn near one time we, we, we came to teach class Monday and it was standing room only. There was so many individuals in there waiting for us to teach the class. Just waiting, man. And among all those individuals, there was one guy that was spying for uh, Yasha. That's why Yasha was so nervous when he when um, Apostle Tar ran into him. All of this, all of this skullduggery, man. All of this wickedness. One guy was spying for Yasha, spying for Ben, spying for Barack. You know, you know those guys. We call him the the California Raisin, and this guy would sit up. In, in the front row, acting like he was there to learn, but he was actually there to spy for those guys, man. He wasn't even there to learn. He was, he, he, he was there to spy for those guys, and we found out later. And that's just another example of spies and false brethren. So <laughs> for, you, for you brothers now, fast forward to today, like I said, for you now to believe that you don't have that, among your group, well, either you're a spy or false brethren, or you're just not dealing with reality. 
that is a reality and it's truth. All right. Now, having said that, or that being said, let's get into the scriptures. See, I just gave you some examples. And you know, when you hear us talk, beginning to fell the apostle to all down, we, we, we speak based upon examples, man. You mean to tell me you, you got men like Apostle Tar and, you know, then you have men like myself and Apostle Ramlab on down, the elders. We've been in this thing for so long, so many years. You think along the way we're not going to pick up a lot of experience and see a lot of things, you know, spiritually? <laughs> anyway, the book of Galatians, the second chapter, the fourth verse, which says this. And that because of, because I'm going to go right to the point. And that because of false brethren. Now this, the Apostle Paul actually dealt with this. This is at the church of uh, Galatia. And that because of false brethren, unawares, <coughs> brought in. They, they, they were brought in by what? They were brought in by the Spirit. See, the Lord brings in the good brothers as well as the bad. And I've made videos on that. You know, the parable of the net that caught all kind of fishes and uh, they drew the net to the shore and they took the good ones and threw away the bad ones well it's that's a metaphor for the many guys that are coming in in this truth coming in this thing of ours not everyone is good not you have certain guys that come in to be made examples of later you have certain guys that come in that are in reality spiritually false brethren. And and that's why this thing is so scary. And that's why the Apostle Paul mentioned about keeping under his body. Meaning uh, 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 examining himself. Keeping under his body is a, a metaphor for examining himself. Which all of us are supposed to do. We're all supposed to examine ourselves according to the scriptures. And make sure that we're not false brethren. Because like I always say, that our worst enemy is ourself, man. That's our worst enemy. You know, but some guys, they don't examine themselves because they know deep down inside they're nothing but false brethren. Okay, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Yahweh Shai, that they might bring us into bondage. And that bring us into bondage part, it goes, it goes deep because you, you had the wicked Pharisees, the wicked scribes, the wicked Sadducees. They, they uh, you know, they um, love to put guys that, you know, especially the Israelite foreigners that came back to being Israelites, they love to put them in, 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 in bondage, meaning they, um, here it is, they couldn't keep the law. The wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, they were nothing but hypocrites. But as soon as those Israelite foreigners came back into the faith, there were the wicked scri uh, scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees beating them, beating the Israelite foreigners over the head with the law. You know, a, a good example of that is uh, was the circumcision. You know, which like I said, for a grown man to get circumcised, that's a hard thing. Okay, so that's just one example where it says that they might bring us into bondage. Then you have the other example where a lot of those wicked Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees were really officiating for the Roman Empire, for the Romans. And we all know what the Romans were about. They were about keeping us in bondage, keeping us Israelites in bondage. It tells you in the scripture where um, um, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violent take it by force. We weren't having a good time as Israelites under the Romans, man. Let me just bring that out for you. The violent take it. It is right here. So if you think we were having a good time underneath the Romans in the days of Yahweh Shai, then think again. Uh, the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter and the 12th verse. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. The kingdom of heaven is the nation of Israel. Okay? 
That's a metaphor for the nation of Israel. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. So who was the, vi the, the violent that took it by force? Well, the Romans. And what's a good example of that? Well, 70 AD. Even before 70 AD, around 67 AD, going into 70 AD, was when they totally took us over. You know, and, and they destroyed the, uh, Jerusalem. So much so, the destruction was so, so great that you had Israelites that fled uh, Israel. You know, fled into the north and west part of Africa. Fled all the way west to uh, western Europe. And you had Israelites that fled all the way east to the far east. That was the beginning of something called the Diaspora. The great scattering. And our nation has never been the same ever since. Ever since 70 AD. We've been banished out of our land. And all this can be proven by scripture. How we were kicked out, out of our land by the Romans. And to this very day you have the so-called white man. Known as the so-called Jew and the so-called Arabs that are fighting over our land. Which the la our land don't belong to either one of them. And again that could be proven by scripture. But there you have it, brothers. You know, so you had, the point I'm making is you had um, wicked scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, even though they were holding the office of, of an Israelite office, they were really officiating for the Romans. They were helping the violent <coughs> uh, take it by force. Okay. In other words, there were sellouts. So, <clears throat> it's important for you to, to understand that you have spies and you have false brethren, man. Here's another example. Let me see if I can find it. Even Amon Yahawashai. Well, we know about Judas Iscariot. That's well known. But there's a scripture. Let me see if I find it. Feigned. There's a scripture where it mentioned about certain men that came among Yahweh Shai themselves as righteous men. Let me see. Oops. Themselves as righteous men. Bear with me. Yeah, it's going to be a little tough to find this this scripture. I know the word feign. G N. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, found it. Now here's another example. See, all this proves that you're going to have spies among you, you different groups out there, especially, and I'm speaking of Great Millstone, the different camps. That's how, that's how Esau is able to get his intel from the different spies that you have among the different groups. You have to be, the scriptures speak about being circumspect. These are things we have to be circumspect to. And I read it, the scripture in the last video I did, Ephesians 5 and 15, to be circumspect. Circumspect means to look around. You can't have that Mike's mentality, man. <laughs> that Mike's mentality is not the right kind of mentality. And what is a Mike's mentality? Well, like I, like I said, go back to the guy Mike who made that statement to Apostle Tar. When Apostle Tar said, "Look, we got spies in here," he said, "Ah, oh, man, I checked everybody, to, huh? There ain't no spies in here. Can't have no Mike's mentality, man." Luke twenty. Or the book of Luke 20 and 19. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour, sought to lay hands on him. <laughs> Always them chief, wicked chief priests and wicked scribes, man. Want to destroy Yahweh Shai. They sought to lay hands on him. And they feared the people. 
for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And Yahushua was always sticking it to the, those individuals. Now, for you guys that say, how come you Israelites, you great millstone guys, can't get along with the rest of the, the Israelite groups? Well, here's an example of, of the chief priests and scribes. What does it say here? Chief priests, right, and scribes. They weren't getting along with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai wasn't getting along with them. I just read it says that they wanted to lay hands on him. And I'm, it's not talking about patting him on the back saying, you're doing a good job. No, they wanted to lay hands on him, meaning they wanted to kill him. So is Yahweh Shai supposed to get along with those guys? See, when you make statements like that, oh, you Israelite groups, you don't understand. Why don't you Israelite groups get along? You don't understand the history, man. You don't understand what's going on, okay, you're clueless, that's why you would make a statement like that, anyway, reading on, it says, uh, the, 20 of, the 20th verse, and they watched him, and sent forth spies, let me read that again, Luke 20 and 20, and they watched, who's the day, the wicked chief priests and scribes, they watched Yahweh Shai, and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men. And we, brothers, we got that today. And if you don't think that that's happening among your, the different camps, among your camp, then you are not dealing with reality. And, and if you're one of the top heads, the camp leader, then you, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be in that position. That's something you have to, you have to consider. Okay. And they watched him and sent false spies. You can't just trust everybody. Like, look, case in point, me, my circle of people I really trust is very small, man. And I like it that way. You know, I'm not trying to be Mr. Popularity with, with everybody in the camp, man. Because you got some guys that just ain't right, man. Either they're a spy or they're false brethren or both. And that is the way you have to think. It tells us in the Apocrypha that a friend which another word for friend is a brother, is known in adversity. Now, there's some guys I, I've, you know, that I've, I've actually been arrested with, you know, thrown in jail with. I'm more apt to trust those guys because we, we went through shit. You know, we went through, through uh, adversity and came out together. You know, I'm just going by what the Apocrypha says. And the Apocrypha don't lie. It says a friend is known in adversity. That's how you know a real brother, man. If you, you suffer right along with him. Did not, well, wait a minute. Did not the uh, 12, you know, minus Judas Iscariot, of course. Did not the, uh, did not they suffer the same thing that Yahweh Shai suffered? Pretty much. Yes, they did. So what does that prove? That proves that they were brothers. Okay? But anyway, let's get back to the scripture. Luke 20 and 20. And they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men. So <laughs> these, these guys were spies that acted like they were righteous men. That they might take hold of his words. And that's why I tell you, brothers, you got to watch what you say and who you say it to. You know, you got some guys, man, they're trying to get you to say something that would later incriminate yourself before Esau. Okay, and Esau is always watching. That devil is always watching. Uh, the proof is a Southern Poverty Law Center. Now they got all the chapters of Great Millstone. So you're going to tell me they haven't been watching all these years? They haven't been watching us grow? You're going to tell me they don't have individuals that have reported back to them that were once part of us? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> and they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his words. They did this to Yahweh Shai. So if they did it to Yahweh Shai, they're going to do it to us. Yahweh Shai said it best. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they shall persecute you also. So if there were spies sent among Yahweh Shai, you better believe there's spies among us now. And why did they send those spies, the chief priests and scribes? So that they might take hold of his words so that they would accuse him 
to the Romans. Remember, the, the chief priests, eventually the chief priests and scribes, they gave up Yahweh Shai to the Romans. Remember that. And the Romans crucified him. Okay? That they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power of the the power and the authority of the governor. Let me read that again. That 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 so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And it's the same thing now, brothers. It's the same thing today. You got guys set up among us different groups that are ready to uh, listen to our words and then later report back to their their superiors, whatever. And and then um, later, those same words will be brought back to our face. Well, you said that. You know, you said this and you said that. We got, we got, uh, we got a witness here that said you said that. Speaking of witness, there were, the scriptures tell us there were many false witness brought against Yahweh Shai. Let me see if I find that. We got false witnesses set up among us too, man. <laughs> this thing of ours is no joke, man. Many false witness. That's why it's so scary. And like I always say, and I'll say it to my dying breath, man. Our, the main enemy is not the next guy. The main en enemy is ourself. That's why we have to constantly examine ourselves. That we're not a false witness, that we're not a false, bre a false brother, that we're actually sincere to Yahweh Shai. The book of Mark 14 and 55. <laughs> the chief priests again, man, they keep coming up. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses, a witness against Yahweh Shai to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him. So Yahweh Shai was really, he was hated more than he was loved. And it's the same, it's going to be the same thing for his men. They're going to be more hated than they're going to be loved. That's how you can spot a real man of Yahweh Shai. He'll be more hated than he'll be loved. Okay, because remember, Yahweh Shai said it best the servant is not greater than his master. So if they hated it, the majority hated Yahweh Shai, the majority are going to hate us. Especially Yahweh Shai being formed in us. Mark 14 and 56, for many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. <laughs> so they were just straight up niggas, straight up liars, just like we got now. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. And he wasn't even talking about the actual temple. But because those guys were niggas and had no understanding, just like you got today, they tried to incriminate Yahweh Shai in what he said, which was a spiritual saying, which was a dark saying when he said, I will destroy this temple and rebuild it again in three days. He was talking about himself, man. And then when you go deeper, he was talking about the nation of Israel beginning with the elect. Okay, which that's another video for another time. But you had these niggas who had no understanding, just like you got today. They went and report back to the chief priests and scribes. Yeah, this man said he's going to destroy the temple uh, and rebuild it in three days which that was a huge offense back then because the temple was considered sacred and holy. The actual temple that uh, King Solomon built. So, that's the point, brothers. You got spies, you got false brethren. Even the Apostle Paul, I'm going to end the video with that. Even he had to deal with that. He spoke about false brethren. He spoke about false brethren a lot. So if you don't believe you have that among you, your different groups, then you, <laughs> you got your head up your ass, man. And if you're in a top position, you really shouldn't be in that top position. 
Okay, now I had read Galatians 2 and 4. Here's another example. 2 Corinthians 11 and 26. In journeyings, often, now this is the Apostle Paul he talking about himself, along with the brothers that were with him. In journeys, often, because he made a, the Apostle Paul made many, many trips during during his ministry. In perils of waters, you know, we read about one peril where the ship actually broke up in pieces, man. The, the ship that the Apostle Paul was on. <laughs> man, Apostle Paul, went, <laughs> Apostle Paul went through a lot of shit, man. He suffered a lot of shit. <laughs> and, and that's what this ministry is about. It's about suffering, man. And there are guys that don't understand that. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen. And you know, the worst niggas, nah, the worst nigga is in, a, in our nation is not that nigga around the corner selling drugs or that stick, stick up kid ready to tax. <laughs> like that rap song, you know, the line goes, stick up kids are out to tax. And I think it's by a by um, a gangster. I think it's just to get a rep. Back when rap used to be, used to be rap. Nah, that, 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 that ain't the, the most wickedest nigga. The most wickedest nigga is the one brought into the truth. <laughs> That's the most, even, even, even uh, Elder Yashwamba came to that conclusion. He said the wicked, the most wickedest nigga, the most wickedest low low life, grimy, stymy, low life nigga is the one brought into the truth, man. <laughs> like the scripture call him the twofold child of hell. That's the most wickedest nigga. That's the guy you gotta watch out for. Nothing but a wolf in cheap clothing. Anyway, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils, peril means danger. By the heathen, in perils in the city. See all the shit the Apostle Paul went through, man? In perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils, here it comes, in perils among false brethren. So that goes back to my title, man. You spies and false brethren. You got them among you, man. And you got to be circumspect. We got to be circumspect. Because we have false brethren and spies among us. It is what it is. All right, so with that, I believe I've said enough. Hopefully this video was uh, edifying to you brothers out there, you sincere brothers. And for now, I say Shalom.